Oh man, I'm so excited about this video. I don't really know how to intro it. So I got some exciting stuff coming up. Uh, last week, let's just cut to the chase. I was actually invited to play a little bit of End of Dragons early. Obviously, it's releasing about a week from now, but I have actually already got my hands on it. Just a touch, I was given a Guildhall capture tour, which you'll see a tour on very soon. Uh, I got a little taste of one of the meta events in the Echavald Forest. In fact, I, I said a little taste, a whole meta. Uh, saw a little bit of Kainang, a little bit of fishing and skiffs. All of that content will follow soon. But, do you know what I really wanted to do the second I got in game? That's what this video is going to be about. It's the thing I've been wanting them to do at the studio every official live stream, but they've been hiding it every time. And I wasn't sure this would be, you know, under embargo or NDA or whatever. Apparently I am allowed to show this footage. I have no idea why Arena have been hiding it. And that's the world map in the new expansion. So, just before we get to that, enjoy some of the, the random footage in the background, which I'll have full commentary on later. Uh, I want to give you guys the context for why this is so cool. Here's the funny thing about Guild Wars. In the first game, when you could go to Canther, it was demonstrated to be so far away from Tyria that when you played that campaign, you had an entirely separate world map. When you'd press M and pop it, it was a whole new landmass. We were told in the lore that we had gone south over the ocean, but you never actually got to see Cantha connect to all of the areas way up to the north of it. There was no real tangible idea. I mean, fan maps could be made that would stitch them together according to our headcanons, but we never actually got to see it in game. The same happened again with their second campaign, Ilona. When you were in Ilona, it was its own world map. And I think a, this was largely a consequence of their business model at the time. Uh, they were separate campaigns, not full expansions. You could mix and match campaigns as you saw fit. So giving things entirely separate land masses made a lot of sense. When we did finally see an expansion come to Guild Wars 1, I of the north guess what that time they did actually expand on an existing map and just make things bigger so a few years ago when path of fire came out adding those nightfall desert regions to the sequel game the studio actually did something that really surprised me and was amazing instead of using a separate map they just connected everything together perfectly and logically that actually required a little bit of finagling as things didn't actually quite line up as far as Guild Wars 1 was concerned but now they just expanded things and those who were around when Path of Fire came out will remember very clearly that thrill of logging in opening the world map and just seeing how much further south you could go now how much further you could uh, zoom out so in this process they actually made the map a lot wider too because the truth is that because of the way these Guild Wars 1 campaigns work and they all said they were south Guild Wars 1 and Tyria as a fantasy setting before the sequel game came out actually had a really bizarre map geography. It was a very thin, very tall map, which I suppose is unique in a way. What you obviously usually find in more standard fantasy is a world map that's kind of square or even rectangular, looks a bit more like the real world globe. But Guild Wars had this weird thing where they had a lot of lore, but it was all like this tall skyscraper type slice. When Path of Fire came out, in order to keep the aspect ratio of things somewhat manageable, we actually had two things happen. They let us look further south, all the way down to Istan eventually with Living World Season 1, but also a lot more to the east, giving us glimpses and painting land masses and geography that's totally new. Areas untouched by both games. Areas they might not have written lore for yet, like that weird inland lake that appears to the right of Ascalon ever since the Path of Fire era, and areas that they might not have any realistic expectation to get to soon. So, the big question coming to Cantha now is this. Cantha is so much further south than even Ilona was across an entire ocean. And given that, can ArenaNet possibly do this again? Can they possibly just expand the world map? Think about how much further wide they would have to go then and how much they'd have to telegraph about stories and places that they may have very little work done on. Now, given the... The End of Dragons marks a whole new beginning for the game and a bunch of new stuff. I actually think this would be a really good idea. But a big part of me has been wondering if they'll just cop out, so to speak. And they will do it like in Guild Wars 1, because Kant is just too far away and it will have its own world space. Which I do admit, at least, would be a notable experience. My dream 
right before going into this video has always been that they would connect it, that we would see the insane size of the world, and it's clear just how many stories and how much potential and things there are left to see. Show me the Battle Isles. Show me some of these other continents that got hinted at in the Order of Whispers globe and the Derman Priory carpet texture. Let me experience one day a 20 gold waypoint cost as I teleport from the very south of the world to the very north. What will End of Dragons do? Well, the Mad Men, they went for it. They did it. My ultimate fantasy they have gone with. Cantha is fully connected to the world map. And oh my god, it's expanded. So that's the video here. This is the new world map. And there's some even new fancy UI as well. So I just want to mouse over it. And uh, show you guys how cool this is. Uh, I cannot believe for the life of me that they never just put this image out there on a blog post or something. Or showed it off in a live stream. So here, I'm going to super slow-mo. Um, here I am at Kaineng. You'll see some commentary from me uh, on this little uh, area in a bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure what format I'm going to do there. But basically, when I first got in, I was looking around the map all over the place. And then I figured one of the last things I should do is open it again and mouse around in, a, in an actually intelligent way. <laughs> so that I could do some real commentary on it um, at LA Day. So here we go. So this is Cantha. Let's freeze frame here uh, just to start off. Obviously, this is some pretty juicy stuff. Doesn't show the connection just yet, but we will see in a moment. Uh, you'll notice some new UI in the bottom right. Now, uh, I know some of you guys want me to zoom in a lot already. I was told we're not allowed to post this footage or do stuff if you zoom in too much. I think in particular, if we'd actually unfogged a bunch of maps and had a bunch of map text on there, they wouldn't have liked it. But in the demo, none of it's unfogged anyway, except for a couple of pieces of information we already know about. So, uh, so yeah, you can see I'm standing Kaineng, new Kaineng as it were. Old Kaineng, the old Raisu Palace and all that, absolutely destroyed up top. Now, based on the actual position of the map text for Kaineng, it looks like a lot of that old Kaineng stuff isn't actually going to be there at expansion launch you know maybe we'll get those flooded areas later um you can see it says canther obviously in big letters in the center um you've got shingji to the left now one thing i've always dreamed of in guild wars is those satellite islands around shingji i've wanted to go to they don't really look like they're going to be a part of it in fact maybe not even all of shingji island is available it looks like the western mountains like the giant bluffs and stuff might not be there based on where the the text is centered could also be some living world season six stuff which really starting to come forwards now you notice south of Satcantha though one of the satellite islands is unveiled that was the old arena island it was also the very end of the winds of change storyline so listen in this last week before end of dragons comes out i do recommend you guys go to my channel and watch my playlist on Guild Wars 1, Winds of Change. It was the last story ever going into Guild Wars 1. And it ends on that island. The final boss takes place there. And then the first thing that they show us here in 2022, a decade on... Uh, we're actually back on that island. It's not just an arena map now. It's obviously the guild hall So that's the Isle of Reflection. It actually looks really big. The other place I've always really wanted to go is that island even further to the south um, But again, that doesn't actually look like it's in a part of End of Dragons a couple of other things are notable to me here uh, The Jade Sea is painted that very very vibrant color uh, now, there's been a lot of discussion in the community about this ever since they started showing it off. And seeing that it's even here on the world map really makes me think it's very intentional. Recolor of the Jade probably will be connected to the lore and the fact that this is Dragon Jade, not just regular Jade. And we'll be uh, learning all kinds of things there. I also find the Whirlpool effect of it really striking. So... There's a whirlpool you can see there that's clearly leading to the Harvest Temple where we got to go to in Guild Wars 1 And there was a whirlpool surrounding in Guild Wars 1 as well But it wasn't so big like on the map the whirlpool graphics there are huge So I wonder if another subsequent event has occurred there something to do with Kunavang, something to do with the deep sea dragon There's gonna be a big plot point in Guild Wars 2 You remember of course the key art this art here I'll later up on screen that came out right when uh, end of dragons press started and that big page came out I think there's a story to tell that a lot more turbulence has occurred there because it covers so much of the world map it's unreal um and then what's really cool as well is actually if you look far enough south now and i think i can actually mount when we are on freeze frame i think you'll see i mouse further south there is a little bit of detail in the mountains central uh to this shot here uh that would be togo's estate which was playable in the guild wars one bonus mission pack and i don't think it's going to be a part of the expansion not a launch but again might be a living world season six candidate it looks suspiciously well detailed. Like, we can actually see the square of the estate there, which I think is really curious. And also, very near to Togo's estate here, you've got that seaboard near the river that cuts into the Echovald Forest. Um, 
And there's still a hint of a bit of Kainang City there, right? Uh, maybe they'll give that city area a whole new name. Maybe there's a bunch of new lore we can get out of there. Again, it all depends on how much comes out of Living World Season 6, I think. Um... Because I, I can't expect the expansion to do absolutely everything. And finally, Echovald Forest itself obviously doesn't look so grey anymore. It doesn't look so clearly delineated as a petrified location. It's uh, it's a lot greener. So there you go. So that's Cantha. Uh, that's only a part of the story, though. Playing the footage forward. Let's see what we've got uh, a little here. Now, I'm super curious about the east coast of Cantha as well, which we never got in Guild Wars 1, but is there now. You'll see me mouse to it um, before long. Uh, it's funny, we spent all these POF years with me just hoping that the last little bit of Istan would be shown. And now I'm looking at the south of the Cantha map, hoping that eventually we get that, that shown one day as well. Um, but yeah, so you can see one of my party members is there actually at Shingji because that was a part of the demo and some of the other footage that I'll be releasing for you guys uh, in the next short little while. After taking a quick peek at the details of the Eyes of Reflection here, I'm just going to scroll north, okay? We're going to scroll north until we see where Regulatory is. So we're south. We're in the very bottom left corner here. Look at that remote suggestion of an island, by the way, in the western waters there. We're going to move up now. Of course, halfway we should see the Battle Isles. And I can tell you they are on the world map now. Even, look how far up we're going. You've got a hint of an island there, which was on the Dermond Priory map and so on. Uh, kind of an interesting color. Again, I doubt that there's too much detail, but it's being hinted. And now we start to see Tiri. You see the ring of fire there? And look at these stringly little islands coming out. I mean, I don't know. This makes me feel like I'm playing Guild Wars 1 again. I look at, like, that island out in the war, and I think, who lives there? What might be happening? You know, are there destroy influences there or anything? That's a kind of level of detail I'm not sure was on the Dermon Priory map. Here, look, we got Heart of Thorns, but way off. This is the western coast, and there's quite a lot of, like, stark greens and details there. Up north now... We can actually see the Isles of Janthir and the full Isles. In-game before End of Dragons, you can only scroll up a certain amount to, like, halfway through the Isles. They're all there now. Look at how small Divinity's Reach looks at this zoom scale here. Coming all the way across the top, some more over the north locations. And look here, let's freeze frame again. This is the very top right of the map now. Look at this seaboard up here. Now, I don't really know whether this fully connects to, like, some oceans on the other side of the Tyrian supercontinent. It's interesting, on the Order of Whispers globe, you kind of get a hint at this water. But the suggestion might be that it's really cold there. On the Dermon Priory floor, the carpet map, here, I'll put this on screen for you guys. You can also see this water. It looks like a massive inland lake. Uh, and we're just getting a little bit of a hint of it there. The idea that one day we might visit the Ash Legion and they're actually somewhere around there. A little bit more about the Ogres and beyond the Blaze Ridge Mountains. I mean, this is far, far, far more open than what we've seen in either game. So coming all the way down on the eastern flank, it's not quite so exciting, I don't think. If only because, you know, this is just mostly, you know, the super continent. Uh, and a lot of this was kind of hinted at already. I think if you data mined the map during the POF era, a lot of this was visible. Particularly down here near Dislana, okay, which is kind of an extra region off to the side of Alona. Uh, potentially got stuff to do with the harpies. You can see a lot of this green cliff area. I like this idea that there's some kind of verdant lush lands near the water and then some kind of massive sheer cliff. But here, look at this. South of Ilona is another island, like a tutorial island sized location. You know, in Guild Wars 1, Istan was used as like a tutorial island. Xingji was used as a tutorial island. Look at this one just down here on the other side of Alona. I I'm so fascinated by that place. And speaking of Istan, we also get all of Istan in shot now. Currently in game, you can't even see all of Istan. You can't see all of those western areas, the Latenda Bog for the Guild Wars 1 players watching this video. You can't see all of the Matani Keys and the Isna Isles even. But now we just breeze past them. We're zoomed so much out. Istan doesn't even necessarily look that big. But don't forget, that's a whole, just a corner of that island is a Living World Season 4 map, which is a massive map. It's a mount-enabled map, and it's almost like a blink-and-you-miss-it thing as I'm scrolling along. And then we continue our descent through the waters again, and there's still, even though Ilona goes very far south, look at all this unending ocean. There's so much unending ocean here before finally this is the edge of Canther again now. This is a part of Canther that we never saw in Guild Wars 1. We do know from the world map that if we could just go a little bit more east, there would be more islands. But yeah, there's a lot of striking geography here too. Um, I really get the sense from this area in particular, we probably will never get to play in these exact locations. You know, and I can already imagine the YouTube comments right now, people saying, ah, it doesn't matter because it's not all going to be playable. I don't think it has to all be playable for the MMO to be massive, but it just needs a bit hint as a really big, exciting, immersive, living world, you know, a con world for people to be invested in and role play in and, and speculate about. And I think the world map does a lot for that. So, two more big things to show off. Uh, obviously, by just doing the edge, we don't go through the middle. 
Uh, so what's smack bang in the middle of the unending ocean? Just straight south, for example. Boom, here it is. You've got the Battle Isles. So I've been really curious about these for a long time. Anyone out of the loop, Guild Wars 1 also had a PvP continent, also had its own separate map, which we knew to be somewhere in the middle. Now it is actually tangibly defined. Here's the Battle Isles. Now this is a really curious place in lore. The tidal wave that uh, arose when Zaitan awoke destroyed Old Lion's Arch. Uh, the devs in End of Dragons are explaining actually managed to go all the way south and even hit Cantha. And in lore, even from way back in 2012 or before, we heard that the Battle Isles got flooded by that tidal wave. So I've always wanted to go back to the Battle Isles. I've liked the idea of a Battle Isles that all the Zaitan that were there got washed away or something. And now the water's receded again and people are doing things there. I think it's an interesting setting. But I've always butted heads with other, you know, law purists on this because they've said, oh, it's flooded, so therefore you can never do anything. I think it's been a great a place for great potential in the story. I actually kind of hoped, you know, uh, the year 2021 had absolutely no patch, like interim patch leading into End of Dragons. For a long time, I was a fan of the idea that maybe we'd get one more like random map and it could be the battle isles well they're here at least for the end of dragons launch so again living world season six might actually get to take us here and i'm so happy that there is actually tangible islands there and that they are doing something with it because i never thought that the tidal wave completely destroyed the idea of ever being able to use this location you just say the waters go back down a little bit the other big thing, and this is the last thing really I have for you in the video, is the user interface in the bottom right. So you might be wondering what exactly is this. Uh, essentially, it's fast navigation. There's now so much map to mouse through that what if you want to just quickly snap to Canther? What if you want to quickly snap to Tyria? Or if you want to quickly snap east and west? That's what it is. So when I click the top, now it's got the letters T. Y are there, which I guess is Terrier abbreviated. Um, if you want to go to the west, it's M A G, which I'm guessing is short for Maguma. Uh, to the east, it's C R Y, I'm guessing is short for Crystal Desert. And then south, it's C A N, I'm guessing is short for Canther. So you click those and it, uh, it rapidly moves you. It's quite cool and I like the art on it. It's basically a little quality of life feature. So yeah, if you're playing stuff in the Jade Sea and you want to go to the Eye of the North next, uh, you can do so very, very easily by quickly clicking on those new buttons. And those hopefully will serve us uh, very well as the game goes along. So there you go, that's it. Uh, that's what I wanted to open with, the world map. Arena Net should have shown this ages ago. This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. And keep an eye out as I will give you a casual commentary and my take, everything I experienced and saw with the other demos they did, which I've actually got a lot of thoughts on, not all of them positive. Um, and so I'll see you guys for those uh, hopefully very soon. So cheers, guys. Let me know what you think down below. I'll be hawking the comments very closely on this one. For those of you who haven't been following along my complete Guild Wars 2 story replay, this might be the first video you've seen from me in a while. I just want to say thank you so much for, uh, for watching, and I hope you all had a really, really great February. Honestly, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you very soon. Thanks. As I mentioned, you've got a week till launch. If you want to watch Winds of Change and get, get in the headspace of the Ministry of Purity and Canther and stuff, I have a playlist in the Guild Wars 1 section on my channel. Just click on over there.